Brandy Johnson, as a 15-year-old, gained worldwide acclaim in gymnastics at the Seoul Olympics. Her 10th place finish in the all-around competition served notice a new star was rising. Since Seoul, Brandy Johnson's star has rocketed. The European press recently rated her one of the three best gymnasts in the world. She was America's best by far in the all-around competition at the U.S. Championships recently as her mother and coach looked on. For. That was two weeks ago. Today, you'll see Brandy Johnson, now 16 years old, attempt to win championships in her four event finals. Youth was also served in the men's competition when a powerful teenager from Philadelphia, Tim Ryan, was a surprise winner in the men's all around. This 18-year-old from Stanford, an up-and-comer in men's gymnastics, can seal the title with an impressive performance on the high bar, and he's having one. It's going to come down to this dismount. And it's an excellent one. And I think we've crowned a new champion. Today, Tim Ryan tries to extend his newfound success in the six individual event finals as NBC Sports presents the U.S. Gymnastics Championships. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Don Crickey, and welcome back to the Met Center in Bloomington, Minnesota, where America's best in gymnastics are gathered for our national championships. If you were with us a couple of weeks ago on NBC Sports World, you saw two teenagers, Tim Ryan and Brandy Johnson, win the all-around titles. Today, we're going to be looking at the spectacular individual event finals. I'm joined by a former U.S. Olympian, Kathy Johnson, and we have a young lady today, Kathy, Brandy Johnson, who might be ready to run the table, win everything. On her way to qualifying for every event final, Brandy dominated the all-around competition, winning by almost two full points. It is conceivable that she could win every event, and that's never been done before in this competition. However, with the new rules, none of the scores carry over from the all-around competition. All the gymnasts start at zero, so it's wide open for all the gymnasts trying to vie for that national championship on an individual event. The spectacular has become commonplace in gymnastics. You have to be spectacular to compete with the world's best. Bart Connor certainly did. He won a gold medal for the United States back in 1984. Bart, the danger factor is unbelievable. I guess the only people that aren't afraid are the performers. And especially the young ones. And I think that's the most exciting aspect of what's happening with the U.S. men's team. There's so much new young talent, and the U.S. coaching staff is very pleased with that. Today's competition will be especially exciting for a couple of reasons. As Kathy mentioned, the no, no scores carry over from the preliminary rounds, and the athletes will be featured in their favorite and certainly their best events. So we're going to see some outrageous difficulty today. There are four apparatus for the women, the vault, the uneven bars, the balance beam, and the floor exercise. The men have six to compete in. They begin with a floor exercise, then hand ride the pommel horse, and conclude with the very exciting horizontal bar. As we mentioned earlier, Brandy Johnson won the all-around competition, with Christy Henrich and Sandy Woolsey taking second and third. But keep in mind as we enter today's event finals that none of these scores carry over. All the gymnasts begin at zero. Each of the ladies gets two chances at the vault. Right now, we're going to watch young Kim Kelly with her second vault. Now, Kim scored a 9.487 on her first vault. She's actually performing a weaker vault for her second, a Pike Sukahara. Now, keep in mind, this vault is only valued at a 9.5. Each of the vaults that the gymnasts perform are rated according to the code of points. She does a Pike Sukahara, which is a very weak vault, but she does it well. Kim Kelly got 9.15, an average score of 9.318. 
Here's a 16 year old on the rise, Sandy Woolsey. Now Sandy's opening with a pretty strong vault, a Yurchenko full twist, round off onto the board, and a layout full twist off. She gets decent height, but as you can see, she really has some form errors within the vault. Also, she had to pike down the landing, landed low, and took that step backwards. Now, we'll take a look where the major form deductions were. Right here, she goes onto the horse. Her legs are bent and slightly apart. And then, of course, she lands a little low and has to take that step backwards. Now, from this overhead angle, you can see she has ample distance from the horse, but you can see where her legs are bent and apart. And the score for the first vault, 9.387. Now, the new rules state that a gymnast must perform vaults for two different categories. There's a definite weakness in second vaults in this competition. I think the leaders will be determined on the relative strength of their second vault. She does a Sukahara with a full twist, and you can see again a low landing. She had to pipe down. That will be a deduction. That's John Aitken, one of her coaches down there at the Desert Devils Gymnastics Academy in Arizona. I can see relief on her face making that second vault. Again, she, her legs are apart on the pre-flight, low landing, and a little bit off center. Those will be the deductions. You can check out her distance here from the horse. It's a little bit shorter than her first vault. The judges felt that way too, Kathy. Her second vault score, 9.2, an average of 9.293. Now the favorite, Brandy Johnson, perhaps the most explosive gymnast to come on the scene since Mary Lou Retton. She must beat the 9.318, put on the board by Kim Kelly a bit earlier. Brandy is far superior in this event because she has two very strong vaults, both valued at a 10.0. In fact, the new rules favor her. Brandy has already been crowned the all-around champion and is trying to become the first ever to win the four individual events. Her first vault is a Yurchenko with a full twist. Beautiful position in the air. Now she's a little bit off center on the mat. And that will be a slight deduction. Perhaps the most intent onlooker was Kathy Johnson, her mother, if not Kathy, certainly coach Kevin Brown, making some corrections before Brandy's second ball. Now, as we noticed before, she was off center on the mat. It looks right there that she was actually off center on the horse. That's very unusual. First ball score, 9.687. So she is in position to win the first event. This is one of my favorite vaults coming up. She does a handspring front pike with a half twist, and she usually does it so beautifully. Way up in the air. Has to pike down a little bit on the landing, but that's just a slight deduction. It's such a strong second vault, and again, it's valued at a 10.0. A difficult vault, well done. Randy with coach Kevin Brown. She's back with Kevin after she went with Bella Caroli during the Olympics. It is crucial for a gymnast to have two strong vaults worth 10.0 if they even dream of meddling in this event. The beautiful second ball. And on the sidelines, Coach Kevin Brown with a little boogie trying to help Brandy through it all, and together they get it done very nicely. And the judges give Brandy the best score yet, a 9.875 for a two-vault average of 9.781. Brandy Johnson takes the lead as Holly Voorhees is set to ball. And as you can see, she scored a 9.75 to qualify in this event, but that just shows her potential. None of the scores carry. She does a handspring front pike, a beautiful vault. Has trouble with the landing, but that's a very difficult landing. This vault is worth a 10.0. Now, the amazing part of her vault is the distance she gets from the horse. She's a real athlete, 16 years old, from Frankenmuth, Michigan, Holly Voorhees. Good height from the horse. Nice position in the air. Just has trouble with that landing. It's a pretty substantial hop. Now they await the numbers. First fault score, very good. 9.70 for Holly. Now she performs a layout Sukahara, which is only valued at a 9.7, but keep in mind it's higher than most of the values of the other second vaults we've seen. Nice ball. Again, nice. that hop on the landing, but her legs also separated on the pre-flight. And some commendation from coach Ricky Garcia for Holly Voorhees. It was one of the strongest second balls we've seen in this competition. But again, it's only out of a 9.7. You could see her legs separate. She has nice position in the air. Here you can see her very substantial distance from the horse. 
She really does get elevation and extension. Holly Voorhees gets a 9.425 for an average of 9.562. So Brandy Johnson takes the first individual event. One event home on her look for a sweep. What is really exciting for Brandy is those two balls could really help her win a medal in this event at the World Championships. The official standings, Brandy was followed by Holly Voorhees, Kim Kelly, and Sandy Woolsey. One gold medal for Brandy Johnson. The individual event finals of the U.S. Gymnastics Championships continue with the very difficult men's pommel horse competition coming up. This is NBC's Sports World, and today it's brought to you by Michelob. One taste will tell you why the night belongs to Michelob. By Reebok. By Thompson, the first name in lasting protection. And by Brut Quality Men's Fragrance and Toiletries. Brut, it smells like a man. at the U.S. Gymnastics Championships. This is Don Cricky with Bart Connor and Kathy Johnson. That's how the all-around results stood two weeks ago with Tim Ryan a surprise winner. Those numbers don't count in the individual event finals that we're watching now. Kevin Davis, who is a standout on that great University of Nebraska team of recent years, is getting set to perform. But first, let's go back to the floor exercise and an Ohio Stater, Michael Racanelli, who really put on a show. Bart? Mike is a terrific gymnast. He's new to the national team. He's very explosive, and he's coached, of course, by Peter Corman at Ohio State University. Peter won a bronze medal in floor exercise in the 76 Olympic Games. Michael opened with a beautiful layout double through to back handspring straddle jump to a front one and a quarter. Everything about this exercise is world class. The tumbling is terrific. A full in in the second pass. He has good flexibility. Those are called flares. Does them up to a pirouetting handstand and then shows tremendous flexibility in the straddle split. Little originality in his press to handstand sequence through the split position. Nice style for Racanelli. Talking to Peter Corman the other day, he said that when most gymnasts normally work out three and a half, four hours a day, most of the senior elite gymnasts, he said Michael can work out as much as seven hours a day and not get tired. He just loves to be in the gym. He's a real, real hard worker. Racanelli finished his floor routine with a full twisting double and stuck the landing. That's a world-class floor routine. That could medal at the upcoming World Championships. Pedaled here in Bloomington, Minnesota, the 9.80 score gave Michael Racanelli the floor exercise championship. Now Kevin Davis is set to perform on the pommel horse, as difficult an event as there is in gymnastics. As you can see in the all-around competition, he scored a 9.35, but those scores don't carry over. All the scores start from zero in the finals. One interesting note about the finals, typically for most event final competitions, the judges demand a higher level of difficulty, more D elements in the exercise, and certainly Kevin does a beautiful job as he does excellent flare work up to a handstand, good form on the scissors. He travels down, loops to a handstand, and a full pirouette off. Nicely done. Kevin has excellent form. The last half of his exercise, however, is lacking in difficulty. The first half is terrific and certainly world class. He'll need more difficulty in the last half if he hopes to do well in the upcoming World Championships. 9.50 is the score for Kevin Davis, who competed for the U.S. at the Seoul Olympics. Here's Conrad Vorsanger, a most impressive young gymnast from Stanford. Conrad opens up with flares as he travels across the horse, and he's having a little trouble. He seemed to be a little off rhythm. Maybe he was rushing a little bit in the first part of the exercise. And you can see he has trouble as he comes down from the handstand into the scissors. I asked Conrad Bart about his tremendous progress. He said it's not a long range thing, it's day by day, inch by inch. Well, he's had a terrific year. He was the Pac-10 all-around champion this year, but he had trouble on that routine. It looked like he got off 
to a really shaky start because he seemed to be rushing a little bit. This is a very difficult sequence as he travels across the horse in a flared position without using the pommels. Really tough stuff. But it seemed like he was in a little bit of a hurry. 9.15 is the score. Tim Ryan is up next on the pommel horse. He talked with Bart about a fluke injury he had on the event earlier in the year. I was uh, on pommel horse, you know, I was jumping off and uh, there was a crease in the mat and uh, my foot landed in that and it rolled under and gave me a lot of problems for uh, you know, a couple events this year. I couldn't compete in the U.S. Challenge, and it was still sort of weak against Russia when we competed against them. And uh, But throughout training since regionals, it's gotten back to full strength, and it's not a factor anymore. Well, Tim is certainly very strong on the pommel horse, and he has really good basics. His coach back in high school, Gene Watson, coached him in East Stroudsburg, Pennsylvania, where Tim drove 40 miles to and from training every day to work out with Gene, and Gene really stressed important basics, good form. Oh, a little trouble there on that dismount. That's a very difficult dismount, a hop to a handstand, but he was just a little short going downhill. Tim Ryan, the 18-year-old men's all-around champion, who's our strongest gymnast. This is an incredibly hard dismount. You'll see he's gonna hop to the end and try and catch it in a handstand, and he's just a little underbalanced. But it's a good thing he's so strong. He can muscle it up, of course but he saved the major deduction. Tim Ryan gets a 9.30. And so as we look at the final standings in the men's pommel horse competition, Kevin Davis is the winner. Ryan second, followed by Vorsanger. Brandy Johnson already has one championship in the vault. Now she's getting set for the uneven bars when we get back. The next challenge for America's best, the uneven bars. Brandy Johnson excelled on the bars in winning the all-around competition two weeks ago. Up first is Sandy Woolsey, a difficult event. Once the competitor begins a routine, power and grace must be interconnected. It's an event like the floor exercise that rewards the spectacular. Nice reverse heck. Good height above the bar. To straddle back to handstand, a little awkward on that handstand. This is her favorite event, and this is where she really has the cleanest execution of all her events. Giant full turn over the top, right into a tuck double flyaway. A few form deductions in there, but good difficulty, good swing. Sandy's getting better meet by meet. Her coach, John Aitken, a former national high bar champion, congratulates her. And this is the highlight of her routine. It's a move of devalue, the hardest move. It's a reverse hect. It's a giant with a full pirouette over the top. She was a little bit over too far when she made the pirouette, but ended nicely with the tuck double back. Or 9.65 for Sandy Woolsey, and she's pleased. That gives Sandy the early lead. 9.65, the number that Brandy Johnson has to shoot at. But up next is a U.S. Olympian, Shelly Stack, a young lady that actually radiates electric energy. This is Shelly's best event, but some of you might remember she had trouble with compulsory bars at the Olympics in Seoul. Nice hop to reverse grip, front giant, pirouette, right into a reverse giant with a full pirouette into a reverse heck. Beautiful routine so far. Nice difficulty. She has a good combination of different types of elements. Many of the girls tend to use a stock routine, all the same elements. Just two giants into a tuck double back fly away. It's a really pretty routine. Shelly is congratulated by coaches Richard Gishi and Trina Tinti from Scats in Southern California. This is a nice angle to see the quick hand movement she uses. It's a giant to a full pirouette, right into a reverse hit. Looking for good height here. Now she catches with her arms a little bit bent. That's a slight deduction. Now many of the gymnasts are using this combination, giants into tuck double back flyaway. If they're gonna be competitive with the rest of the world, they're gonna have to upgrade the difficulty of the dismount. 9.725 is the score for Shelly Stack, who exhibited grace and continuing motion throughout. Brandy Johnson now knows that she must score a 9.737 to take the lead. 
And another way of upgrading the difficulty of the routine is having two major release moves, and Brandy does just that. Early on in her routine, she does a beautiful combination. She does a reverse hect, and then right into another release move. There's a reverse, and she, I can't believe it. I, she hasn't missed all year long. And the problem here is this is a bad place to miss for her. She usually does a second release move, and without the connection, she can't do it. And that miss is a one-half point deduction for Brandy, and it'll cost her a chance at sweeping the four individual events. She's also in jeopardy of not receiving a potential four-tenth bonus point. She finished nicely. Now, as I mentioned, there's a bonus point okay. system. All routines are judged from a 9.6 if they have their basic requirements. And there's a four-tenth of a point yeah, bonus system. Three-tenths for originality of elements and combinations, and one-tenth for the extra D. She doesn't have the extra D since she didn't get to do her second release move. She has a beautiful reverse heck and just can't get her hands on the bar. Here's coach Kevin Brown as he watches. He's spotting for her now, but on the miss, he must walk away. He can't help her remount. Her mother, Kathy's in the stands and knows all the nuances of the sport. Uh-oh. She's never done that before. I don't know. She can't come out of one release move. I mean, she does one release move out of the other. So she misses the bonus for that combination as well as an extra D. Not only will she not win the uneven bar, she won't meddle in it in all probability. Here's a young lady that could, Christy Henrich. Christy has had an outstanding meet through the all-around competition as well as the event finals so far. This is a good, strong event for her. Hop to reverse grip, a front giant, very difficult move, into a back giant, full pirouette. She was having trouble with that in warm-ups. She made it now, and again, a reverse heck. Toe on handstand. She's really showing a good variety of skills here. Giant swing, another giant swing, and again, a tuck double flyaway. Good solid routine showing good difficulty. Solid indeed for Christy Henrich, who you'll remember finished second in the all around competition two weeks ago. Since most of the girls are doing a relatively simple dismount, the goal here is to stick the landing. And most of the girls have had that little bitty hop, and you can't give that away in world championships. So Christy Henrich scores 9.687. And as the final competitor, that's good for a second place finish. But a birthday girl, Shelly Stack, who turned 16 years old today, is the winner of the uneven bars. Brandy Johnson, a disappointing fifth. Shelly now gets ready for her final event, the floor exercise. While Brandy Johnson has a chance at two more gold medals, she'll be competing in the floor exercise and the balance beam. The U.S. Gymnastics Championships continue from Bloomington, Minnesota. With Bart Connor and Kathy Johnson, this is Don Cricky back at the U.S. Gymnastics Championships. Earlier, Scott Keswick, a former junior national all-around champion, excelled on the ring. And this was certainly a very big moment for Scott Keswick. He placed 13th in the all-around, but a 9.725 in the rings gave him the gold there. Janie Umphrey was second with a 9.675, and he used an incredible dismount, a full-in pike back out, beautiful finish. Third place on the rings went to Tim Ryan, the all-around champion, as he used an incredible Maltese cross, and he lowered through to a terrific combination here. This is a whip it right to an L cross. Tim Ryan still looking for his first individual title in today's event finals. But on the rings, where you ain't got a thing, if you ain't got that swing, Scott Keswick was the best, followed by Cheney Humphrey and Tim Ryan. Judging is always a matter of great concern for the competitors and their coaches alike. Bart had a chance to address that subject with one of the experts in it. Always a controversial subject in the sport of gymnastics, of course, is the judging. What is a perfect 10? Is it perfect or is it just the best performance of the day? Well, the score is currently, and the, certainly the new rules, are allowing for lots of separations among the gymnasts. A 9-9 can now be beaten by eight other gymnasts because the scores now divide out to 125 ten thousandths of a point. The scoring, of course, and the judging has always been very controversial, and, and certainly uh, Muriel Grossfeld as a three-time Olympian and now an internationally rated judge. Your thoughts, first of all, on the scoring in Seoul? I agreed with some of it, and I violently disagreed with 
some of the other of it. Well, there was a lot of talk about a need for new rules and rules changes. That has been done. The United States has, I think, through Jackie 5, provided a lot of leadership in trying to make things more exact. We now have special requirements for each of the gymnastics events with a specific deduction. We now have many, many more skills listed with precise points that we award to them. We have more judges on the floor. Um, she's provided, I think, very good leadership in trying to make the sport a little more fair. And with that in mind, let's look back to some tape from Seoul. This is Yelena Shushinova, the brilliant Olympic all-around champion. Score this vault. Uh, somewhere between 9.8 and 9.9, approximately. Once again, when we take a look at it, uh, your technical comments on it. Uh, in the beginning of the vault, we can see a little bit of a lack of form. We can see a little casting to her left. We can see a little off balance on the landing, so it's not totally unbalanced, and we can see her listing back to her right. Okay, now to uh, complete this train of thought, she scored a perfect 10 on that in Seoul. Thank you. Yes? What are we going to do about that? Are 10s perfect? I don't think the meaning of a 10 means that you're saying perfection. I think a 10 is one of the tools that we use to rank gymnasts. I think a perfect example is to go back to the original Big Ten, which was Nadia Kamenich on uneven bars back in Montreal in the 76 Olympics. Based on the competitor's scores previous to Nadia, Nadia, I thought she should have gotten about a 10-3 or 4 or 5. But there were three very big flaws in that exercise. The 10 represented a ranking, not a perfection. So the ranking is the most important element, not necessarily the perfect score. I would like, as a judge, to be able to perform both services. But when that isn't practical or possible, the most important thing is to rank the gymnast properly. Thank you, Muriel. And we'll see how the judges decide on the performance of Brandy Johnson on the balance beam. That's coming up next. Back at the U.S. Gymnastics Championships in Bloomington, Minnesota. There is great jeopardy for every competitor on the balance beam. Even the best can lose it at any time. Let's go back now and watch Cheryl Dundas a short time ago. And Cheryl was steady throughout the routine. Even going up early in the lineup, she set the pace with a solid routine, scoring a 9.575. She finished with two flip-flops into a double-twisting layout dismount. And while Cheryl was very good, Christy Henrich, who was up next, was even better. And a very courageous young lady she is. She came back from a near career-ending injury that occurred at the USA-USSR meet at the end of April. It was on this event that she fell on a dismount, breaking a vertebra in her back. But she's back and continued here to show her consistency. She's been steady throughout the entire competition. This is her third event in finals. And steady as can be. She opted here to do a little bit easier dismount, took out the double back, does a nice double twist, and scored a 9.675 to take the lead. Christy Henrich, an inspiring comeback story, goes over to hug coach Al Fong. And now the favorite, Brandy Johnson, knows the number she has to beat to win again. For most gymnasts, beating a 9.675 would be a tall order. She's very capable of that. Particularly in recent times, she's become so confident on this event. The nice original move, a Diomedoff. Two switch leg leaps in a row, fulfilling her gymnastics series requirement. Two dance elements right in a row. This is a critical pass for her. Back handspring, back handspring, layout, step out, solid as a rock. She has really worked hard on this event. And this is what usually makes or breaks a gymnast. Balance beam. Kathy, she's so powerful here. You think that power is, is an advantage in the acrobatic skills? Oh, very definitely. The judges are looking for good height on all the different skills, and she definitely has it. Front tuck somersault.
This is one of my favorite combinations coming up. It's her gym acro series, a gainer layout right into a season. Beautifully done. Again, fulfilling that special requirement. And the dismount around a double tuck. Beautiful routine. Excellent. And keep in mind, she's come back from a slight mishap on the uneven bars, which is very difficult to do. Coaches Kevin and Rita Brown, as ecstatic as Brandy, a spectacular display all performed in an apparatus just four inches wide. This is a great view. This is what the gymnast sees, and you can see how straight they have to be. Legs, body, arms perfectly in line with the balance beam. Brandy is just dead center. This is a gorgeous double back dismount. She actually kicks out a little right there to make the landing. And that underlines a superb performance on the balance beam for Brandy Johnson. Look at the judges score 9.837. She wins again. Two championships in three individual events today. Following Brandy Johnson in the balance beam were Christy Henrich and Cheryl Dundas. One event to go for Brandy Johnson, the floor exercise, and perhaps one more gold medal to be won. Back at the Met Center in Bloomington, Minnesota, this is Don Crickey with Kathy Johnson and Bart Connor. Inside, the focus is again on Brandy Johnson, America's best woman gymnast, her mother Kathy Johnson looking on, Coach Kevin Brown, well pleased with his best product. She's now about to show her stuff on the floor exercise. Brandy just lights up the floor, and the music adds the electricity. It's a very popular music choice. She's performing to the music track of Donna Summer's Hot Stuff, and she's been hot stuff, Brandy Johnson. And she just opened with a pike, full twisting double bat, as good as anybody's in the world. She's definitely charged with more than what most gymnasts have. I love this second tumbling run. She does two whip overs due to a double bat. Nice pass, a little trouble on the landing, but not bad at all. Look at the power in her jumps and in her leaps. Kathy, I think what's so interesting about Brandy is not only is she a powerhouse of a tumbler, but her dancing is very expressive. She's definitely chosen a good style for her for this floor routine. The crowd loves it and it works great for her. Last tumbling run. A double back, a little stumble out, and she actually stepped out of bounds right there. That's a tenth of a point deduction, as well as a step back, probably another and a half. You remember that slip on the uneven bars cost Brandy that event. Now this recent penalty could be expensive because one of the best floor exercise performers yet, Shelly Stack, is still to come. That's good. Okay. Yeah. Good job. All right. I, I think your heel hit. She put her hand up. Brandy was asking her coach if she did step out, and indeed she did. Taking a look at her first tumbling pass, this is impressive. Look at the lift off the floor. Perfect position in the twist. Slight leg separation, but hardly at all. Now, this is where the mistake happened. But again, terrific lift off the floor. She pulls it around too far, stumbles back two steps, and of course the heel goes over the line. It's going to be two to two and a half tenths of a point deduction. Judges score, 9.687 puts Brandy in first, but the very gifted Shelly Stack will perform next. Will she deny Brandy yet another gold medal? We'll be back with more of the U.S. Gymnastics Championships right after this. Shelly Stack, 16 years old today, needs a 9.70 to defeat Brandy Johnson in the floor exercise. You'll recall that Shelly upset Brandy in the uneven bars, and she do it again in the floor exercise. Shelly opens with a pike full twisting double back, just like Brandy. She stepped back, just like Brandy did on her last tumbling pass, and in fact went out of bounds. You saw the yellow flag go up. Kathy, you just have to love this routine. She just cuts loose. <laughs> Her favorite event might be bars, but I tell you what, she looks like she enjoys this one. She shows a lot of energy in this routine, but it's so fast, it's hard to really show good, clean form, showing good footwork and straight legs. It's something she really needs to work on. 
Her middle tumbling run is a combination pass, a double twist, due to a full twist. Now normally she usually does a double twist at the end of that pass, which is something she's gonna need to add back to her routine. It's a very tiring floor routine. I would hate to have to train it. Preparing to do a double tuck dismount. Exactly what Brandy ended her routine with. Pulls it around. Little bobble on the landing, but not too bad. It's gonna be really hard to beat Brandy's score. The difference in the two routines is Brandy did a more difficult middle tumbling run and her dance was a little cleaner. Good performance by Shelly Stack. Now she and her coaches await the judge's verdict. On her first tumbling pass, she over-rotated and stepped out of bounds. She had good positioning in the air, but pulls it around too far and stumbles out of bounds. She really has to work hard on this final double back. Pushes the run, tries to get the lift, and pulls it around. The landing was just a little unsteady, but not too bad. And the score from the judges was not too bad either, but not good enough to win. Shelly Stack finishes second in the floor exercise. Brandy Johnson wins three of the four events today. So the final order in the floor exercise shows Brandy Johnson the champion, followed by Shelly Stack and Christy Henrich. Brandy Johnson's overall performance, one of the most brilliant in U.S. history. After winning the all-around championship, she comes back to win three of the four individual events. Truly a superstar in the sport, and her star is rising at age 16. Looking forward to world championships this year and three years later in Barcelona, if Brandy can maintain her physical and mental training, which is difficult in this sport, she could win one of those coveted medals. The most spectacular event in men's gymnastics is the high bar, and America's best are ready to perform on that when we return to the U.S. championships. This is Don Pricky with Bart Connor and Kathy Johnson back at the U.S. Gymnastics Championships. The final men's event, the high bar, is coming up. Let's look back now at some of the earlier events, like the vault, where the entire explosive effort off the springboard lasts barely a second. William Roth of Temple University was the winner. And he used a terrific laid out Sukahara with a full, and he totally rocked the landing. His score, 9.375. The Pac-10 all-around champion, Conrad Vorsanger, was the judge's choice on the parallel bars. Conrad did a terrific routine. It was packed with difficulty. Good form, clean execution, as you can see there, with tight leg form. He finished with a stutz to a perfect pike double back. And his 9.8 score was one of the highest of the entire meet. Now we go to our final event, the high bar. Here's Cheney Umphrey who was injured much of his freshman season at UCLA, but he's in good health now, fortunately. He's a sensation in this event. At the beginning of the show, I mentioned that we're gonna see some really outrageous difficulty in these exercises. Well, on the high bar, Cheney has one of the most difficult routines being done. He does an incredible release sequence that's coming right here. Reverse act to another one. This one straddled right to a ginger. Three release moves in a row, nicely done. Cheney fulfills a requirement here. This is called an eagle giant swing. There's a hop here. Went. Look at the tremendous speed as he sets up the dismount. It's a laid out full twisting double and he over rotates. What a shame. That's a half a point deduction. It was going so beautifully to that point. A terrific effort until the ending for young Cheney Humphrey. This is a great opportunity to see what happens on these three release moves. The first reverse heck right to the second one. Notice the perfect regress position on the ginger. Boy, that's tough stuff. And the judges give Cheney Humphrey a score of 9.40. Strength and daring are the hallmarks of a high bar champion. In the all-around competition that was won by Tim Ryan of Stanford, he received 9.80, one of the highest marks in the entire all-around competition. Let's see how he stands up in the individual event final. Well, Tim, as we mentioned, has been trying all day to get an individual event gold. He has not yet come up with one. Maybe this is his chance here. His high bar routine is certainly very exciting. 
Here comes his release sequence. One arm giants. To a reverse hect. Right to a ginger. Nice. He kips right into a pirouette. Continues in giant swing positions. Once again, there's the eagle giant swings. Good clean form. A laid out full twisting double and a nice landing. Boy, that's gonna score well. And congratulations from a former world champion, Tong Fei, who's one of Tim Ryan's coaches at Stanford. Tim Ryan, just 18 years old, continues to fly high and with great style on the high bar. And considering he's only 18, it is amazing that he does a terrific combination here. This is world-class stuff. one arm giant to a Takachev, right to a Ginger. Beautiful combination. He continued through with a kip pirouette and finished his exercise with a really good looking stretched position and that laid out full twisting double. With a very nice landing. So Tim Ryan maintains his consistency on the high bar and takes the lead with a score of 9.70. Two competitors remain to try to beat him out. Here's one, Tom Schlesinger. This has always been one of Tom's best events. He opens with a back up rise. He goes over the top in a stalder with the wrong way grip, as we call it. A full over to a one arm, another one arm, right to a ginger. Oh, he's in a little close on that regrasp. An Olympic alternate, Tom Schlesinger is also an academic All-American. This is a really good section of his routine. Those are called German giant swings. He stoops out, half turns, and back into giants. Good combinations. Here comes a dismount. Laid out double back. Nicely done. Tom Schlesinger from the University of Nebraska. And there's one of his coaches, Francis Allen. So Schlesinger now awaits the numbers from the judges to see if he can catch Tim Ryan. 9.65 is the score. He did not. One competitor remains, 19-year-old Olympian Lance Ringnall. And of course, Lance is the gymnast that gave Tim Ryan such a hard time in the all-around competition. Lance needs to beat a 9-7 here. He can do it. Good combination. That's a reverse heck right to a ginger. Looked like he stumbled with his hand there a little bit. That'll be a deduction. It was sort of a moment of indecision. Hop full pirouette. That's a good combination out of the Eagle Giants. Lance always does a big dismount. Here it comes. A laid out double full out. And oh, three steps. That's going to cost him three tenths of a point right there. And that could be the difference, Bart, as Rignald had a great performance right up till the landing. 9.625 is the score. Not quite enough. And so Tim Ryan who was the men's all-around champion, now also has an individual event championship, taking the competition on the horizontal bar. Following Ryan was Schlesinger, Ringnold, and Cheney Humphrey. So in each of the six events, there's a different winner. Bart, is that good or bad? Well, I think it's good, Don, because not only are these six really strong new gymnasts on the national team, but their average ages are under 20 years old. The big story at this meet has been Brandy Johnson, just 16 years old, the women's all-around champion who won three of the four individual events. Brandy Johnson is more than a rising star. She has arrived as one of the world's best. Now for Bart Connor and Kathy Johnson, this is Don Pricky at the U.S. Gymnastics Championships in Bloomington, Minnesota. Glad you could be with us on NBC Sports World.